Uh, this is one of the just one of my photographs of what, a piece uh, of, what, of the installation that uh, CJ did at the Natural History Museum. Uh, I'll leave it to him to uh, tell us what how he interpreted it. A lot of people came in and said, "Ah, oh, Medusa!" So they immediately thought, "Oh, this must be uh, something like a jellyfish," and uh, that's as as as, as good a, a guess as any. Okay, the next exhibit that I want to talk about is uh, X-ray vision, fish inside out, which again just opened uh, just, uh, just under two weeks ago. Uh, and it was inspired by a book called Ichthyo, The Architecture of Fish uh, X-rays from the Smithsonian Institution, which was uh, authored by uh, two women, Stephanie Comer and Deborah Klotzko. Uh, and uh, Deborah used to work at the Smithsonian. She's now uh, at a photography museum uh, in Los Angeles. And the X-ray images uh, have been used in a lot of publications uh, demonstrating some of the, uh, the uh, natural history collections and the art of natural history collections uh, in, in sort of uh, sporadic publications over, over the years. But this was the first time they were, a lot of them were collected together in one book. Uh, and the, so we worked on an ex, uh, exhibit not meant to uh, repeat the book, but just um, add in some more of the x-rays uh, and give them, put them within some scientific context. Uh, this is a, a seahorse, Hippocampus syndonis. Uh, each of the um, x-rays, whoops, let me go back. Each of the x-rays is uh, accompanied by a scientific name, a common name, and some other uh, particular uh, in, a piece of inf interesting piece of information about it. Uh, this is uh, obviously easily recognized as a seahorse uh, and what's so delightful about it is that the specimen that uh, was x-rayed is, is just over an inch long. I mean, it really conveys the, um, uh, the, the distinct and discreet nat uh, differences that you see from fish to fish, regardless of their size. They can be extremely tiny uh, and still be very elegant. Uh, now, x-rays. This is the Caliquet x-ray machine. It's World War II surplus vintage. Uh, it's at the Smithsonian. Uh, it's in the fish division right now. It's not in American history. Uh, and it, it, it no longer works, but it did at one time. Uh, it was used uh, through the 1960s up until the early 70s. Uh, it was, um, this is uh, World War II, when I say World War II so surplus, really just uh, meant to convey that we get a lot of our uh, uh, equipment sort of as hand-me-downs from, uh, from other agencies. Uh, and, um, but this, of course, was uh, x-rays on this machine were produced uh, using film. Uh, we're in the modern era though right now. Uh, and so we have a digital x-ray facility. Uh, and this is the facility out at Suitland, Maryland. Uh, whoops. Uh, here is the, this is the x-ray room. It is, of course, lead-lined. Uh, here is Sandra Reardon at the control panel uh, on the other side of this lead-lined room. Uh, and here she is setting up some uh, specimens to be x-rayed. These are some look-down fish. I'll show you the x-ray in just a minute. Uh, here is the x-ray beam uh, and the table below, uh, which uh, collects the information that passes through the fish. And here she is um, smiling at the <laughs> at having arranged these uh, look down. And it's almost as if she's preparing a meal, and which is a, 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 a not too ironic, because uh, Sandra is an excellent cook. So I'm sure if, if she could eat them, she would. But uh, anyway, she thinks she can't, so she has to x-ray them. Uh, and uh, this is the x-ray of Cellini Vomer, the look down. Uh, it's really, it's one of the larger images uh, in the uh, x-ray vision show. Uh, and uh, immediately, uh, I think, conveys the, the art, the beauty, uh, the wonder of natural history. Uh, not everything made it into the show. <laughs> and, uh, and that's because some fish just don't x-ray well. And this is a, a, a hagfish. Uh, and um, it's uh, it, one of the most primitive of all vertebrates. Uh, it's got a very thick skin, uh, not much of a skeleton. Uh, and when you x-ray it, uh, you know, the x-rays get absorbed by dense parts of the uh, body and uh, just about the whole body absorb these x-rays. So uh, we have this for um, our, our, our purposes, but uh, we thought it wouldn't, wouldn't make very good display. Uh, now, x-rays, um, you know, it's a funny thing about them. We use them all the time within natural history collections, uh, that is within vertebrate collections. Uh, in order to distinguish uh, one group of fish from the other, to examine their skeleton, uh, and so on. And so I was remarking to someone earlier today to, to see x-rays 
um, displayed in the Natural History Museum is, is like as if you took your, your paintbrushes and you, you put them on the wall and said, here, see, look, look at, here's, here's the objects that I work with every day. And so it's a little, it's a little uh, uh, startling to, to go in to see a room full of x-rays because, again, for us, they're just tools of the trade. Uh, in this particular example, uh, this is some, a fish I work on from Indonesia. Uh, this particular uh, species has 36 vertebrae. This is one of the things we would do, count uh, individual elements on the x-rays. This particular species has 29 <coughs> vertebrae. Uh, you could easily tell them apart. Uh, these are the kinds of data that we might record from an x-ray. Uh, numbers of fin rays, uh, positions of the fins, and so on. So they're extremely valuable to us. Uh, and one of the nice things about them is they do not uh, destroy or alter the specimen in any way. You can take an x-ray and then put it back in the jar. Uh, I want to tell you one little story uh, about how x-rays were uh, important in solving a, a, a scientific question. Uh, this is a little fish now in two pieces. Uh, it's less than an inch long. Uh, was collected in 1872, said to be from False Bay in South Africa. And the question that we had to answer is, was it a killifish or is it a guppy? Well, I mean, how can you tell? You can't get any DNA out of it. I mean, it's just, uh, the, the, all you can do is look at the morphology. Uh, fortunately, x-rays, of course, are a bone, which is the most durable part of any vertebrate skeleton, uh, any vertebrate body. Uh, and so we, before it broke in half, uh, we did get an x-ray uh, of the whole body, uh, and we'll just focus in on this uh, one section here. Uh, this, is, uh, this, this is the skull, obviously. Uh, here's the um, vertebral column, and just in this one portion here, which won't mean anything to you, but it meant a lot to me. Uh, this is the first uh, neural spine uh, uh, the, on, the, on the first vertebra. And um, in, in killifish, it's pointed. Uh, in the guppy, it would be flattened against the back of the skull. So I knew immediately it was a killifish. So this is how an x-ray of just a little, uh, uh, awful little uh, thing, I mean, you, you wouldn't even notice it on the table if you saw it, this little fish. I mean, this doesn't look like anything at all. But we actually can use x-rays in order to, to answer some scientific questions. Um, now, just a little bit uh, more about the exhibit. Uh, I'm not going to go through uh, all the 40 x-rays. And actually, we are. Uh, uh, have the Encyclopedia of Life, which is a, a program uh, based at the museum, uh, where it uh, is an online database which has one um, page per species. That's the, the idea, that the goal is to have one page per species of all uh, life on Earth. Obviously, um, we have a long way to go. But all of the fish uh, in the exhibit are, have a page in the Encyclopedia of Life uh, and the website. Uh, here is the website. If you go to the exhibit, you can also pick it up. Uh, uh, through a, a QR code, uh, and um, a, a, again, I recommend that if you if you don't have a chance to go see the exhibit. Now, um, again, the exhibit runs through uh, August, August 5th, <laughs> and uh, one other thing about the exhibit that I do want to point out is that um, it's highly collaborative among Smithsonian um, uh, bureaus. Uh, we were at natural, it's obviously of fish collections through the Natural History Museum. Uh, and it was um, uh, instigated, though, and developed by our CIPES, which is the Smithsonian Institution Traveling Exhibit Service. Uh, and it, it is uh, started, it opened at the Yale Peabody Museum uh, in July. This is, it's at its second venue right now. Uh, it's going to be traveling for the next uh, three years or so. Uh, and then fortunately, uh, when it's all done, uh, the, uh, all of the x-rays uh, are going to come back to the Smithsonian and they're going to grace our hallways. So um, if you don't get a chance to come to the Natural History Museum, you can see it online at the EOL um, or you can follow it around the country. Okay, thank you very much.